All right, so uh, welcome everybody. I'm very happy to be able to introduce this uh, this talk from Chris Stuckert and his his colleagues. Um, primarily, uh, just a little bit of context. This this came out of a conversation over at the Obo Foundry um, uh, committee meetings that we have. To, to and where we're becoming more and more aware of the activities in the earth science and geosemantics realm and the strong desire to start linking these two communities. We've had this conversation in this committee about the, the prototype earth science, earth observation foundry idea that we'd like to develop within ESIP. And of course, this involves bridging over to the biomedical community and all of the, the, the rich history and the rich sort of tradition of um, semantic work and knowledge representation work and applications that have matured in that community over the years. Um, and it's it's really motivating. Um, this morning, uh, Chris Mungo over from Oboe Foundry posted a, a wonderful piece of work looking at the actual COVID-19 or coronavirus, new novel coronavirus uh, genetic maps. It's still very preliminary, but that's using the gene ontology in the background. So it just shows that when you're preparing these knowledge representations that we take so much pain to, to generate, when the time is right, they can spring into action and really start to change things. So it's in that spirit that uh, um, I'll, I'll let Chris introduce himself and his colleagues at this stage. Um, but really, as a, as a, it's, it's a really exciting time right now when these two communities are coming together and we're able to bridge the geosemantics, the spatial semantics, plus the biomedical side, epidemiology and pathogens. So um, with that, Chris, please uh, take it away. Okay, let's see if this works better. I'm Chris Stockert. I'm from the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, uh, along with my colleagues, uh, Sam Ryan from Notre Dame University in the States and uh, Bob McCallum, uh, who's uh, at the Imperial College of London. Uh, can uh, Bob share the slides for us? Can uh, someone make Bob the presenter? Yeah, and can you hear me? <laughs> oh, good, because I had some Yeah, should I, trouble. do you want me to make? Bob, the presenter. Please. Yes, please. Okay, sure thing. And so this is going to Lewis, be. Lewis, by the way, there were I think there were some extra notes. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so this isn't going to be so much a presentation as uh, starting a conversation. Um, and uh, this conversation, as you uh, heard from Pierre, was motivated by um, our need uh, to uh, work with geographical locations from an ontology uh, sense. So um, uh, this was driven by um, one of the projects that we're involved in called Vector Base. Um, my role is I'm uh, a co-investigator in um, the UPASS DB project. Uh, in sector base is part of that. Um, and um, uh, both Bob and Sam, however, are um, project uh, in very much involved in, in vector base and will be doing a lot of the, the talking about um, what's driven um, our, our needs. Uh, Bob, could you go to the next slide, please? Sure. So uh, vector base covers invertebrate vectors of disease, and um, it contains population biology uh, data sets that include geographical locations that are visualized on a map. Uh, but vector base is part of this larger um, project, um, this larger ecosystem uh, of uh, National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases supported Bioinformatics Resource Center. Uh, that covers eukaryotic pathogens as well as invertebrate vectors. And so uh, what we're going to talk about today is going to be focused on vector base, but it really has a larger um, application to um, other parts of the project. And that includes uh, ClinFEDB, which is a clinical epidemiology uh, uh, resource that has a uh, data set, uh, not about COVID, but about enteric disease and, and other um, uh, types of, of data sets like that. So this whole ecosystem um, has a need uh, for these geographical locations that will be visualized by this map tool that uh, Bob will describe. Uh, so 
with that background, um, what we'd like to do is, first of all, tell you what we're currently doing and currently working on uh, in terms of representing geographical locations, but then follow up with a discussion really as to, well, how can we bring, what, what we're gonna tell you what we're currently doing in terms of standardized semantics, but um, we want to discuss with you how we can bring ontology um, into this process and do it in a way that is um, hopefully uh, uh, coordinated and consistent with what uh, uh, people on ESIP are, are also thinking about. So, uh, Bob, can uh, you take over? Sure. Um, so we have some static slides here, just uh, just in case. But we've developed this. Um, well, no, it didn't work that way around. We 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 built started building a database of mostly sort of field collected data, and then um, built this map interface on top, uh, which I can just give you a quick a quick intro to. So we have actually a huge variety of types of data. We're not huge. We have a, a variety of data types here. We've got um, uh, surveillance. Bob, I think we've lost you. Yeah, I can. I, we can't hear you anymore, Bob. Um, I'm not sure if it's a bandwidth issue. Perhaps it's a good idea to stop sharing video feed um, at the moment. But uh, yeah, Bob, we, we we can't hear you anymore. It's not. It's it's not. No, it's not muted. So I don't think that's the issue. Maybe while Bob resolves that, I can at least show the the website. Sure. Yes. Oh, I guess Bob's fixing, so I can't. Um, so I think what he was about to say is that we have a, a number of different data types, including abundance data. So this is how many mosquitoes of what species were collected in a given place. Uh, pathogen testing. So here they test a, a given uh, mosquito for what pathogen, such as West Nile or uh, dengue fever that it, it may be infected with. Um, some have some sort of genetic sequencing done. So that's a different kind of data set we have is identifying where those are. Um, insecticide resistance status. Um, so they'll collect mosquitoes from a given place and, and test them for uh, resistance to a particular pathogen, a particular insecticide. And so that's another one of our, our views that we have. And we can, our system is flexible enough to handle just about any kind of data, but once we get enough data of a particular kind, we um, make a specialized view for it, which Bob, I'm sure will show in a second. Or has he logged off? No, no. So while we wait for that, um, yes. Um, so the so when you say like it's 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 you can integrate whatever data that that comes in. How do you do that? Do you do you stage it in some way? Do you do you sort of make it a bit more? Uh, so we have curators here, and um, you know, that's about half of my job. We have another full time curator. Um, we get data in all manner of, of awful states. And uh, if we have 100 data sets, probably 100 different formats. We, it's probably very different from what you and, and, and more um, standards based, especially this community, which I think is all about standards. Um, when we get data, it's in any manner of formats, so then we, we have to send it through all sorts of different pipelines and, and just internal processes to clean. I see, okay, so then you really have full-time curational power there. And uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I work in the biology field too, and genomics, et cetera, and uh, I, I feel your pain certainly. But also, I think um, it's not an it's not uncommon in Earth observation either, especially with new kinds of data that are coming in that don't have established standards that you know that have been running for a while. So um, I think I think there's more in common uh, than than uh, one would at first imagine. 
anything else. But also don't forget, you know, um, we don't have the equivalent of GFF files for population biology. I mean, obviously our, our genomic side does have the, the, the genomics people, at least your data file tar formats, um, have all developed in an age where people have thought about this a all little right. bit more. It looks like Bob, are you, are you with us again? I am, thanks. Yes, sorry about that. Um, I guess I'm trying okay, to use so maybe we can Linux and it was. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Did we go back? Slides, Bob. All right. Okay. But but I didn't show anything. Right. Okay. Well, let's have um. Okay, so um, why is that coming up? Yeah, so um, Sam probably mentioned the the data. Um, and now I've got echo. Um, if if you're not speaking, could you please mute your microphones? Um, I think that would reduce the echo. Thanks. So um. One of the things we've tried to do is, is just bring all data together from different sources and there are different flavors of data here. So you can switch to different views to show different um, flavors of the data. So the insecticide resistance data has markers with um, shading to give you a um, an indication of the resistance. So Madagascar's pretty good and West Africa's quite bad for insecticide resistance. Uh, and the key thing is, this is, um, I mean, there are millions of data points uh, here, and we they're um, aggregated into these geohash rectangles. So geohash is a, a nested sort of um, character string based ref, um, coordinate system. So everything in this rectangle has a probably like a four letter character string. Inside this rectangle, there are more rectangles. When we zoom in, the the, uh, the data is now aggregated to this finer grained, um, to this finer gr gr grained uh, grid. Uh, and this is all done uh, server side, so you don't you don't wait for long. You don't wait for your map to load millions of data points, and so it's all very light and reasonably responsive. Um, and the other key thing is um, uh, uh, the data is all annotated uh, and searchable. And so uh, I'm going to come to this. I mean, we, we, we want ontology based geographic place name terms so we can do searches like this. So the data is annotated with finer grained terms like the, the sub the administrative regions within these countries but because of the hierarchical nature of the ontology we can also query for higher level terms such as western africa so um i'll just show you how or what we've done sort of historically we, we did start using gas um, up until about a year ago, so for three or four years, we were manually assigning GAS terms uh, to every collection site record. This, there's a problem here because um, multiple na multiple places with the same name lead to curation errors. So that there are you know, 20 or 30 different Santa Marias in GAS. If, if you have a data point from Santa Maria, in, even in, if you know it's in Brazil, well, you know it's in Brazil, but finding the right Santa Maria in Brazil, whatever it be, leads to curation errors that we then spend a lot of time trying to clean up. And there's no GPS, there's no that, that long data in GAS to help with this process. So it, it's a pain, basically. Um, but if you do have, like I've just explained, if you do have a hierarchical ontology like um, representation of your place names, then you can do queries 
for higher level terms. So we but recently what, found... What is gas? What is gas? Oh, gas is the Gazetteer Ontology. Uh, okay. Chris? Mm -hmm. I, I could give some background on that. Um, so so gas is actually, it's a sister ontology to Envo. It's huge. It's like more than half a million terms. And it's it's a gazetteer, so it's a collection of place names, but the, it's organized along ontological principles. So that was that was Michael Ashburner primarily um, who, who generated that, and uh, it's so Obo's Obo's been trying to bring it back, but the thing is so huge, it's very it's very difficult to manage and, and implement. So Lynn Trimmel right now and uh, a few people on her team are trying to bring it back, but uh, indeed it does have some issues as as have just been described, and that lack of links to Geo, geographic coordinates or information systems, it's a big one. So there has been some um, drive to try to link GAS entries to Wikidata so that then you can actually query across geo coordinates or at least some general areas. But again, that's that's going to be quite a quite an opus at this stage. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe Chris, you have more insight onto that since you've actually tried to wrangle it. I know I don't. Uh, thanks for that background. Though. Great, thank you. I'm not sure who was talking then, but that's great. So, um, so we we came across GADM, um, and I mean this this um, was like uh, really um, a really good find because it it has seems to have polygon data for every country down to admin two, except from for small islands and. Um, it's all there in one one set of files, all consistent, all ready to go. Uh, I don't really know the history of GADM either. Sorry about that. And it's open access, open availability. So, so what we did was convert the GADM hierarchy hierarchy from country to down to admin level two into an ontology file. Then we merged that with a manually created mini ontology of top level terms grouping countries into um, regions like West Africa, Western Africa actually, and uh, continents. The GADM does lack that higher level organization. So then, um, then we have a very simple way of assigning place names to data records now. We, we just make sure the lat long information is correct. That's much easier to do during the curation process because you you fire it up on a map and make sure it's in the right place. Um, you can see obvious errors in that long uh, easily. Um, and then we have a script that does polygon lookup from the lat long data to assign an admin two level term. Um, and that's it really. So. I mean, a very small number of, um, of sites fail because they've erroneously been placed in the off, in offshore somewhere. Uh, I, think, I can't remember. I think we have a two and a half kilometer radius you know, fuzziness in the lookup, but it's still some are still even further out to sea. And um, but it's a it's a very very it's like I think three out of yeah, several hundred thousand collection sites. So that's <clears throat> that's what we do. Um, what we want to do in the future, we, we really want to keep thinking using polygon data. So as you've seen in the map demo, the, the data is aggregated based on rectangles, these geo hash rectangles, uh, and shown as point, shown as, um, circles, uh, circular markers, but what we could really, what we'd like to, to be able to do additionally is aggregate by polygon, aggregate by admin level, yeah, admin or country, admin level or country, and then display a polygon, also known as choropleth, which I'm sure you all know about. Um, so that would be nice to add. And I just add that you know, GADM has GADM has done us well, but we're not wedded to it in any way. And I think if we could 
if you know if if gas was um, supplemented with geospatial data, that would be great. And then I've left this open just in case Chris or Sam want to add anything that I have not thought of in, while preparing for this. So I hand over to Chris and Sam now, and questions as well, please. So Bob, could you go to the next slide, please? Right, so I think um, these have already started to come up. Um, and uh, Pierre mentioned ENVO um, and uh, association with, with GAS. So um, is there, so, so this was a discussion topic uh, uh, that, that we wanted to start having with you. Um, is there a future for us to, to migrate to GAS? What's the timetable for that? Um, should we continue with what we're doing in the meantime? Um, and I think, Bob, you also had a uh, question about um, you know, compatibility with uh, GeoJSON. Um, yeah, I, um, I didn't get a chance to follow that up, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking to use GeoJSON as the part of the data transport language for the um, for the map so that's basically our presentation and and would love to um you know get questions or comments or um thoughts about um where we should go with this well thanks a lot that's a, that was really really cool to see and it's really cool to see it in action coming from a more data driven side and now seeing the utility of adding a bit more semantic um, interface there so I think what you've touched on is like one of the holy grails that I've always wanted to bring from the oboe side. And also, I think also what, what, what's happening within the ESIF community with Suite and other ontologies to connect geospatial um, informatics, geoinformatics with knowledge representation and semantic queries. Um, and it seems like, you know, you're, you're, what you're doing in a very practical and pragmatic way is getting very far. You know, so just grabbing Gatam, turning it into a compatible um, ontology file, doing some bridging work to make sure some sort of upper level extra abstraction is there that works, and then rolling with it. So, um, you know, GAS, there, there is an effort to, to, to compartmentalize GAS to release subsets like the oceans or certain areas of land or certain features, um, which would also make it a little bit easier um, to say, okay, this is Santa Maria from, let's say, within Mexico because then there would be the Mexico subset. But frankly, I wouldn't hold my breath there because it's a huge, huge amount of work. I think um, my, my gut instinct is that, you know, keep rolling with what you're doing because you're making a lot of progress. But at the same time, it would be great if you just pinged this community in particular because there are lots of resources and activity here that could perhaps help you boost that up. Because then on the oboe side, you know, I, take, I put on my oboe hat, hat. In terms of geospatial stuff and environment stuff, we do, we do need this community at ESIP to kind of lead the way there. I mean, um, we we know our we know our stuff in terms of ontology engineering, but in terms of application, um, I, I think your you you your your applications here would drive it. it. It would put a fire under a lot of this development and say, hey, look, people need it. This is what can be done. Can you match it? And then we can prioritize development where it would help you. So in, in short, I wouldn't say um, one should wait for the for the gas um, relaunch, but at the same time, I would say. Let GAS know this is happening so that they can prioritize um, some of your use cases here. Um, for the GeoJSON LD, I, I, does, does, is it, do we have a representative in the call that can uh, comment on that? Or, or if there's any response to, to this intervention of mine, please, please go ahead. Um, so I'm, are, are we, I, I apologize, I had to step away for two seconds there, and I missed what you were saying, Pierre, about what the action, what you're asking for here. Are, are we talking about the first point here, or are we talking about a larger point now? Um, we're talking about the first one, um, okay. and, and the second, in, in terms of how the Oboe Foundry is thinking about things like gazetteers and place names, 
Mm-hmm. And I just sort of said, well, Gaz, there there is some effort to to sort of relaunch it to make it a bit more usable. It's 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 there, but it's it has flaws. Um, but it that's going to take some time. And uh, frankly, the recommendation was to for for ve- for what I see here, keep rolling with what's happening in this very pragmatic way, uh-huh. and push that back to communities like the Gaz developers. Um, such that they see what's going on and can can prioritize content creation, um, and then we actually create another community because we. I was in a UN meeting. There's a, there's a United Nations group called UN Gegen, so the United Nations group of experts on geographic names. If you can believe these things exist, but so there there was a call about linked open data for geographic names and the the desire from the United Nations to use semantic technologies there. So again, there's going to be more activity there, and the more practical applications that are demonstrated, the better. Um, it's not a question of then trying to championing championing what we think our favorite ontology happens to be. I mean, I, I like Gaz. I think it's 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 wonderful, but it's really application driven. So if you can demonstrate something that works, that's going to put a good positive pressure on the whole community to kind of think about more practical solutions. So you know, that's I'm just sort of in admiration of the work that's been presented and encouraging that further. Okay. I agree with that. You know, I think that this group in particular as well, you know, we think back to some of the community members and the work that they're doing. Uh, Blake, Blake's work comes to mind very much here as well, and Dahlia's as well. I mean, last month, um, I think a lot of the data modeling efforts that are going on there to represent complex geometries in, in, in the linked data paradigm certainly is, it could be of use to I don't know if I'm referring to it as vector base. I think vector base is the project. I don't know what the underlying data models are, are called or what the geometries are currently being referred to, but I'm just going to say vector base. I think there's quite a lot. When we think about putting all that stuff together that community members are working on here, I think in terms of vector base improving the way in which it represents geometries as linked data, I think there's a lot that that project could benefit from. No, absolutely. That's that's a really good point, and that that's a natural partner in many ways. Uh, so USGS efforts in this, um, and the use of GeoSparkle and other other um, approaches. You know, we need to kind of diversify the market and see what works. Okay. Well, you know, I think we should note this down as part of maybe some sort of future effort. I mean, it seems like there's a clear need. I mean, part of our mandate, I suppose, is, or part of our, our description as the eSymptomatic Technologies Committee is, is to evangelize you know, what's going on here. And I think it would be a very purposeful effort for us to try and, and, and make an impact here. It sounds as if over on the, over on the vector-based side as well, it would be something which would greatly benefit that project. You know, maybe we take some of this off offline and, and we continue this for the next you know foreseeable future and, and try and figure out um what i think maybe where we could start is by compiling the list or or, or the, the the content on our end on the ESIP side and again it's stuff that's been presented and, and where standards or guidelines are emer- i suppose it's not standards it's guidelines are emerging um, and 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 kind of brief them to on the vector base side yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. Sounds really viable. And um, yeah, so 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 for the vector-based theme uh, team, thank you uh, for that. And uh, as you see, you know, we we we're we're not so much providing solutions, and and we're we're not the kind of committee that's going to say use this or use that. It's more like who should you be talking to, and that's very much in the ESIP spirit. You know, ESIP is about that. You should have more questions than answers, and just try to get a team of people together to innovate. So um, I think we'll, as Lewis said, we'll take that offline. Uh, conscious of time, uh, our half an hour is up, but we'll take it offline and try to try to think. Oh, Ruth, you had an intervention. Oh, I just had a question for the team, which is, um, so it looked like you were only going down to the second level um, geographic areas, um, so n- and no lower. But is there a desire to go? Uh, lower than that because there are third level names um, and you know as has already been mentioned the USGS has has even got um, you know systems that you know you can even do things like airports and stuff of that nature so I'm, I was just wondering what is the intention of this of, of, uh, of this uh, project yes 
Thanks, Ruth. That's a really good question. Um, oh, sorry, I came in too early. But thank you, Ruth. Um, Go ahead. So yes, we we it's it is a year ago when I I kind of engineered this, but I I believe GAD GADM wasn't complete for all countries at admin level three and and below. So it may have just been a pragmatic choice to stop at that level. It was plenty. It was plenty enough terms. I mean, for the purposes of um, users. I mean, users looking at our data primarily just see on the map. They know where Brazil is, and they navigate to there, and then they look with their eyes. The the higher level groupings. Um, like Europe or West Western Africa are things that people can query, you know, with a text query. Um, searching for an airport. I mean, actually, what our what our tool doesn't, our map tool doesn't have is you can't type in JFK Airport and then it'll zoom to to New York. So that's. Um, that is something we sh we i mean more of a google maps like functionality is completely missing and therefore it would be good to have all the polygons and names right down to the to the finest levels um mm -hmm. so the, these are good things to think about thanks for the question i didn't really answer it but it's good it's a, a good thing to keep thinking about we tend to design features as data sets come in. Um, we do have an epi, epidemiological data set uh, that we're eventually going to get to, which has very many uh, village level, like African village level data. And you know, at that point, we would have to, at least in that area, probably um, have higher resolution level layers. It, um, it's it's you, this is like really, really touching on. Um, the, the kind of holy grail that everybody here wants that it's come up with many of our um, partners you know many of the people in ESIP the ability to for systems to understand what the partonomy of geo geographic names and space how it corresponds so I think it's a common need and I think it's a need we need to communicate across the community and try to rally more effort into getting something working to be able to merge uh, geospatial search with semantic search but I'm, I'm becoming very conscious of time now and uh, Lewis I think um, we need to move on, but thank you very, very much uh, for your your intervention here, vector based team and Chris. Uh, I really appreciate yeah. it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For having yeah. And if I could just ask really quickly, um, Bob, if you're able to share the link to that to those slides in chat, that would be great. Yeah. Thanks, 